you know, you don't have to have a happy ending to be happy. This is for you cult survivors, us cult survivors. One of the lessons that I've learned that I'm constantly learning after leaving a cult many years ago is coming to peace with this search for happiness, the pursuit of happiness and what that actually means and what that looks like for me. Because the cult gives you an idea of what happiness should look like. They create the reality, this false reality for, for us. And they tell us how it should be, how it should look, how we should feel. And, and these promises that they give are, are lies. At best, they're half truths. Because these promises are so big, they can't be delivered on. The cult can't deliver on their promises to us. They never could but they had to sell us on these promises to get us to surrender ourselves to their ideology. And so we enter into the cult experience many times on the wings of these promises, the promises of peace, joy. In my case, it was a Christian cult so it was the fruit of the spirit, as the Bible, the Bible verse says, you know, love, joy, peace, patience, and, and this peace that transcends all understanding, this promise that you can't cast your anxiety onto God and that, you know, all, all of your anxieties will go away that God will take care of it, that God has plans for you, that you have a hope in the future. The cult promises, whether it's a religious cult or not, they promise that your life is going to be better. They promise that your internal world is going to, to transform. They promise this transformation, this self-actualization that that they can't deliver on because that comes from, from us. But they, in order to function, a cult has to get people to externalize their power to the group and to the ideology. So we become codependent on the group. It's a codependent relationship. And so we're dependent on the group for our happiness. We're dependent on the group for our peace of mind. We're dependent on the group for our salvation and our success in life. And once again, this is something they cannot deliver. But they promise that they can. If it's a religious Bible-based cult, they will claim it's not them, it's God that God is working through them, that they are the conduit that God is using to deliver these big promises to you. But the reality is they can't promise you that. They can't, they can't deliver it because their main concern is, was, will always be their organization their mission. The individual does not, does not count in a cult. It's the group collective. It's the hive. It's the hive. It's the Borg. And we're just cogs in the machine. We're spokes in the wheel. We're batteries for the matrix. 
but yet they still offer us these promises. And that's why this video is titled, You Don't Need a Happy Ending to Be Happy. Let's draw the connection because one of the big promises is happiness. It's peace. It's inner peace. It's it's this sense of we're going to be okay, a sense of security. Christian cults promise heaven, the afterlife. They really promise that in this life, we'll always be comforted. We'll always be secure because we have this salvation, this connection to God that other people don't have. If it's a business cult, it's you have this economic viability that other people don't have. So when it's a recession, when when everything's going down, you're going to be fine. So cults always promise in some shape or form through their ideology, whether it's political cult, whether it's a business cult, whether it is a religious cult. They always promise that you're going to have something that outsiders won't have. And, and that's going to make you special. It's going to make you the chosen ones. And in the Christian cult, I remember always being read that scripture about we are God's chosen. And, and the scripture exactly verbatim doesn't come to mind, but it is one that talks about we're his we're, we're royal priesthood. And it was this sense of being set apart. It says we're set apart and that we should, we were supposed to take pride in this. We were supposed to feel feel set apart better, superior to outsiders. No one was Christians but us. In fact, in the group I was in, we weren't we weren't merely Christians. We were disciples of Christ. We were sold out. And and we had the zeal, the fire. We had we had what other people lacked. What they weren't willing to do, we were willing to do. And all cults have that. They praise you for going to the extremes. And in and, and that exclusivity, that that sense of being special that we all yearn for in some shape. The child in us, the, the kid, you know, wanting your parents to look at you, wanting to be seen, not wanting to be invisible. And in this world, a lot of times, many of us feel invisible. We feel unseen, we feel unheard, we feel uncared about. And the cult through its love bombing and its big promises offer that where they claim to, but they can't deliver at least not for the long haul. And so one of the things that leaving a cult, one of the things that makes leaving is so difficult, adjusting to the real world or the outside world, is this idea that there isn't going to be a happy ending, that we everything has to be this happy ending for us to be okay that we can't be happy if it's not a happy ending and the reality is life isn't a happy ending and if this is too morose for you i, I welcome you to click off the video I don't mean this as a downer. I don't mean this to be depressing. I mean this as far as, let me put it this way to you. Being in a cult is like being intoxicated. It's like being, a, you know, someone addicted to drugs, cocaine, or, or any extreme drug or alcohol. Coming out of a cult, and adjusting to life after the cult is exactly that way. It's like coming, getting clean. It's like getting sober. So this is, this is, this one I'm sharing is about being sober. And the sober reality, once you come down from the high of the cult, is that 
life is life isn't fair. Life isn't perfect. Life is hard. Life is a bitch. We're all going to have to pay taxes. We're all going to to die. And there's going to be pain. People we love are going to we're going to lose them. We might get divorced. We might we you know there's just some hard things in life that are just just come with the package and and cults cults put us on such a high it's such an escape from life that it it's a hard fall back to earth when you leave and you can you can think to yourself what am i going to do with reality what am I going to do with the harshness of life? What am I going to do when people hurt me, when, 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 I, when I feel alone, when I go through the ups and downs of life? Because the other sober part of this is, yeah, you have tax, death and taxes and, and heartbreak and disappointments and losing your job and the economy tanking and and all that stuff. But life is not one-sided. Unlike the cult, it's nuanced. So you also have joy and bliss and, and happiness and laughter and good times and, and fun. And, and there are good things in life also that come with the package. The difference is when you sober up and, and, and you're coming out of this intoxication, it's hard getting adjusted to life being normal because cults make life so extreme. I remember in my cult days, everything was about being on fire for God, radical, sold out, willing to go to the ends of the earth for, for God, to spread the word, the mission, you know, taking it, you know, my life is going to count. You know, I'm changing the world one person at a time. We're taking over the world. It was this whole movement, right? It was called the sold out movement. And, and, and it, it feels exciting as a young person. I was 18 when I was recruited. So it felt excited. It felt alive. It felt different than, church that I was used to and grew up in. And this sense of purpose is the sense of destiny. And that's what they preached to us and sold to us. This is destiny. You're part of God's, the, the very movement of God, the, the cult leader would say. You're not part of a movement. You're part of the very movement of God. And he would end his speeches with that, that cliche every time. And so no, I'm part of the very movement of God, the modern day movement of God. I was part of something special. That's what they said, right? That's what the cult tells you, but you're just a cog in the wheel. But the point here is that that intensity, that extremeness, in order to maintain that level of, of intenseness, intensity, that level of, you know, it, the call of discipleship, is, as they said in, in this particular group, was high. And, and you had to give 100% and nothing less. Well, what does that mean? That means that you can't be normal. You can't have a normal day as a human being. You can't have normal a normal range of human emotions. You can't be down. You can't be depressed. You can't be out. You can't ever lose. You always have to win even when you lose. It's just this toxic positivity, Christian cult environment that it, it was. And whatever type of cult it is, that's always the dynamic where it's it's so extreme, but it's, it's this sense of you're doing something special. It's a higher cause. You're part of something greater than yourself. And so there's this motivation there. There's this excitement. There is this deep sense of of purpose and and 
for most of us, there is this aspect where we want our lives to matter. We want to be part of something important, something bigger. We want community and family and and the cult kind of bundles all of that together in a package together. It's a deluxe package of all the basic human desires. So that intensity is 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 constant. The demand, you know, is constant. The push, the drive, the pressure, the coercion, the manipulation. But you're always on a hundred. In the group, you know, this particular cult I was a part of. They used to read the scripture in the book of Revelations about how one particular a, a church was lukewarm, so God spit them out of his mouth. You know, and and so this idea of you can't be lukewarm, you always got to be hot for God. Because if you're if you're not hot for God all the time, then you're gonna get spit out by God. And that means you know you're going to hell. So with that kind of ideology, you you always had to be on all the time. Fast forward, leaving the cult, adjusting to the real world, sobering up from that intoxication is rough. It's devastating. It's extremely hard. It's like falling to earth without a parachute and hitting the ground. And so... You, you know, we have to adjust as cult survivors to normal life. We're not this super special, you know, elite squad of people that are changing the world. It's like, you know, it's like we were like these superheroes almost in the cult. It builds up this, this persona that we're these special elite forces, these superheroes, these chosen few. And in reality, I'm just I'm just a normal everyday person. It doesn't mean I'm not special. It doesn't mean that I'm, you know, I'm not great, but I'm just a regular person. And that's hard to to swallow, you know, when you've bought in wholesale to this cult lifestyle and this cult belief system. And and when you have you know, a, a childhood of maybe not feeling special, of being traumatized or treat, you know, feeling f- feeling like you don't matter in this world. It's even it's an even harder fall from from heaven and hitting the ground and going. You know, this is the real world. It's not. Everything is, is extreme. Everything's not, I'm not up all the time. I, and it's a relief in one hand because no human being can be, you know, extreme all the time. There's an ebb and flow. Some days we may be super excited and some days we may just be kind of like meh. Some days we may feel feel sick physically or our moods change, you know, or we find out something really difficult happened or we lost a family member to cancer or something or we're just having a difficult day. We're tired. No human being can just be co- completely, quote unquote, on fire all the time. And so the relief leaving the call is on one hand that you don't have to do that anymore, that you don't have to force yourself and pretend and live in this perpetual state you know, of forcing yourself to be something you're not. And, you know, this, this caricature, this persona, you can, you can be yourself now. But the challenge with that also is, is realizing the, the, the normalcy of life and, and, and just the, the sobriety of realizing you're just a normal person, you know, and living a normal life. And what that actually means is, you know, figuring out how to be happy, how to find joy in life, find meaning and purpose, if, if, if you so want that, without it having to be this super saying over the top lifestyle and, and ideology. 
you know, of doing it without the cult, doing it without having to be extreme and be part of some, some organization that just as a person, you can't, you don't have to be, you know, depended on anyone to give you a mission in life to feel good about yourself. And all this is a process. It's a journey learning that life doesn't have to always be happy for me to be happy or, or to feel a sense of meaningfulness. I mean, even for me, I don't even bank on feeling happy because that's an emotion. And, and as someone who struggles with depression, that, that lives with depression, sometimes you're just not going to feel happy. And, and that's okay. But it's it doesn't mean that that I can't have a meaningful life, that you can't live have a meaningful life, that we can't have a meaningful life with ups and downs. Even if even if you have a hard life, even you know, I would say I have a difficult life in a lot of ways, but I still I think at this point, I have more meaning to my life than I've ever had. And I've been able to find things in my life that give it, give it meaning and give it value that make it worthwhile for me. And, and that's a journey that it doesn't have to be this happy ending of, you know, I don't know, whatever the cult promise, or you, I'm going to heaven forever, or God, you know, I'm never going to feel pain again. I'm, I'm going to constantly be in this bliss state because I have a relationship with God, or, you know, I'm serving the church, or, you know, I'm in this business opportunity, or I'm in, I'm in this political group, whatever the cult is, that there is, it is a journey to not have to be rescued from life that you're just in a very sober and grounded understanding what life is and, and just living it, just facing it, that it's not always going to, it's not going to a lot of times be what you would like it to be. There are things that, you know, if life were perfect, you would do differently or have differently, but that you can still find, joy, you can find your sense of, of, of bliss. But, you know, again, even with that, bliss isn't this constant state like the cult promise. Like, oh, if you just pray and have quiet times every day, read your Bible every day, or if you just follow the cult ideology, you'll be, you'll never be sad again, or your sadness will only last for a little while, but you'll mostly be happy. They can't deliver on that. And it's a lie. It's not true. Life doesn't work that way, you know, and, and it's really not dependent on any, any, any group's ideology is to, it's more, it's more in, in the locus of our own belief system and, and how we view our lives and how we view the world. And, and part of this is giving ourselves the space to just be human, to just have ups and downs, to have ebbs and flows, giving ourselves permission to be angry and sad and, and resentful and regretful and, you know, and happy and joyful and, and grateful and giving ourselves the space to have all of it because life is, life is, has a reason for all of those emotions. And and instead of fighting and, and resisting it, because it's still there whether you resist it or not, going with the ebbs and flows of it, I'm finding is a lot easier. It makes life a lot easier when I can just feel my true feelings about things as they are happening versus me trying to fight it and try to be happy and grateful and thankful and you know, all the toxic positivity stuff, you know, and again, if you feel grateful, if you feel happy, that's, that's, 
as long as it's authentic is the point is it's not that if you feel grateful it's inauthentic it's whatever you feel so if you're feeling feeling a sense of gratitude and you want to pray or break into a dance or a happy dance then do that but if you don't feel that way then don't is the point and and just the reality is life is is what it is life is not I don't know anyone who can is, is gets out off of, gets out of life scot free. Even people you think are the most privileged or the most are the most what would be the word um, privileged, I guess. They still have a lot of stuff they got to go through. I mean, and they can't escape the major stuff that we all have to deal with, you know. And this doesn't excuse inequality and all that stuff, but I'm just saying this is this is life. And the more we can just, you know, embrace that, I think the better off that will be the happy ever after. The happy ever after is us being true to ourselves and and showing up as ourselves and finding within us that piece of who we really are you know, and, and just living, living and living our truth the best that we can. And I think that is the happily ever after. So I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you really get any benefit from this, please like the video. Thanks for listening, getting to the end. I appreciate you. And hopefully we can do this again.